Okay, welcome to another lesson. This time we're still busy with third laws. What we are doing is rationalizing denominators. Okay, so what on earth do we mean by rationalizing a denominator? Well, you remember that a third is not a third is not rational. Okay, now what is ra a rational number? A rational number can be expressed as an integer divided by an integer. Okay, in other words, a third cannot be written as an integer over an integer. That's the whole point. Okay, now sometimes we get an expression, a, denom a, a fraction, where I've got a numerator, a numerator over a denominator but somewhere in my denominator there's a third in other words my denominator is not rational okay now it is just convention in mathematics to rationalize the denominator um, since the denominator tells me in how many pieces my numerator has been divided or um, it, it doesn't make sense to use an irrational number, a number that cannot be represented like that. So what we will do in this lesson is learn how can we change something like 1 over the square root of 2 into an expression or into a fraction where my numerator and or where my denominator is a rational number. Usually our denominators will come down to an integer. Okay, now first of all, the, we are going to work with two types. We are going to have a single third in the denominator, a single term in the denominator, or we are going to have two terms in the denominator. Let's first stick with a single term in the, in the denominator. I'm just going to say denom. A single term in the denominator, and since that term uh, or the denominator is a third it will be uh, an example where my so let, let's do uh, a numerator divided by a third denominator okay in other words the some sort of root that does not simplify to a rational number okay how would we go about it it's very very easy here's the step multiply okay multiply the numerator the num and the denom denom with the third okay and let's say that third I should actually change let's change that into an A so that I can use a D for the degree of the third okay so you multiply the numerator and the denominator with the third D times okay what do I mean well let me do a few examples okay uh, well let me just do step two there's literally just two steps step two simplify you'll see this is incredibly easy simplify okay so I've got for example 1 over square root of 2 now I see in my denominator there's a third there's no rational number for the square root of 2 so multiply the numerator and the denominator with the third d times so there's now a minus 1 times okay now what do I mean by d minus 1 times well I mean that if that is if d if this degree of the third is 2 then I'm just going to multiply the numerator and the denominator once with the third if it's 3 I'm going to multiply it 
two times with the third. But I'll do some examples and you'll see what I mean. Let me just do step two. Step two is as simple as simplify. Okay, simplify. Now, for now, you might say, oh, I've got no idea what you're talking about. So let me do a few examples. Maybe that will clear it out. So I've got one over square root of two. Okay, I see that the degree of my third is a two because there's nothing written there. And according to my steps, I'm just going to multiply the numerator, in other words, the top, and the bottom with the third. What is the third? The third is the square root of two. Square root of two. How many times? Okay, d minus one times. Now d is two. Okay, so I'm going to do it once. Okay, so in the numerator I've got square root of two over in the denominator the square root of two times the square root of two is okay. Let's let's change this to two to the power of a half times 2 to the power of a half, that's the denominators, when I multiply bases with the same exponents, that means I can add up the exponents, so this becomes 2 to the power of 1. Okay, half plus a half is 1. And there I have it. Here I have a de uh, expression, a fraction, where my denominator is a rational number. 2 is a very rational number, as, as rational as I get, actually. Okay, so let's look at another one. Let's say, what about one over the, or let's say, let's let's make it four over the cube root of two. Okay, so I said we multiply the numerator and the denominator with the third, the square root, the cube root of two times the cube root of 2, but how many times, not just once, as is here, but d minus 1 times, so this is d is 3, minus 1 is 2, so 2 times, so I must do it again, the cube root of 2 over the cube root of 2. Okay. Now, what you'll notice here is that in the denominator, I've got 2 to the power of a third times 2 to the power of a third times 2 to the power of a third. Now, a third plus a third plus a third equals 1. Okay, Three thirds is a whole. So this is 2 to the power of 1. So the denominator simply becomes 2. The numerator, doesn't matter what it becomes, it, it doesn't have to be... Um, a rational number and it seldom would be but the numerator becomes 3 now we've got same thirds that's being multiplied which means we may multiply the insides of the third so, so we've got 3 and inside 2 times 2 is sorry 4 and here we can see aha this 2 can go ahead and that can become 1 because it can divide into the 4 2 times so our final answer is 2 to the power of, th uh, sorry, 2 times the cube root of 4. And the cube root of 4 is, it cannot be written any simpler than it already is. Okay, so here's an, this was another example. Okay, I did tell you that there's two times, there's the single term, and as I just showed you, it is quite simple. All you look uh, do is look at the degree of your third in the denominator, you multiply with that uh, third once less than the degree so uh, there's my third I multiplied with it twice because the degree is 3 and I did that in the numerator and the denominator you remember from fractions that would mean um, that I am working with an equivalent fraction I'm allowed to do that multiply the numerator and denominator with the same term now how about if I've got two terms two terms in my third. Okay, well when I have two terms in my denominator, okay, I've got a as my numerator divided by my denominator might now be something like um, a third, let's say a third, plus a non-third, okay, plus or minus a non-third. Or it may be a numerator over a third plus or minus another third. Let's call it okay, and we have to give it things here. So 
So again, now in this case, with when we work with this, you won't get for the for this course, you won't get anything other than a square root. Okay, so it will always be square root just for this course, and I won't extend it. Gets a little bit more complicated when we when we uh, make it a different degree um, than a two. So we'll keep it simple. And you don't have to worry, but you can go and investigate what happens if it's if it's something higher than a, than a square root. A bit more complicated. I'll stick to this. I'll tell you one thing. Um, it will not help just multiplying with, let me show you. If I were to just multiply with s plus or minus square root n. The problem is, let's say we had, we, we both were positives. I'll show you the problem. Where's my eraser? Okay, if both were positives, just like that. Just multiplying the numerator and the denominator with with the denominator will not work. And I'll show you now why. Okay. And uh, trust my steps, but but also don't go and test this. If I multiply this out, I'll get s because square root of s times square root of s will just be s then for the middle terms I'll have these these multiplied so I've got n times the square root of s and n again times the square root of s so I'll have 2n square root of s plus and the last term would be n squared okay so notice how in the denominator yes I've gotten rid of that square root of s but no I didn't really because I added another term okay I have another term here and this term now has a square root of s in it so I still have an irrational number in my denominator it, it didn't help me at all so here we're going to use what is called the conjugate okay now the conjugate in this case is is what I can multiply with to get what is called the difference of two squares do you remember that okay so if I were to take the square root of s plus n and I multiply it with the square root of s minus n, this is now the conjugate. This one is the conjugate of that one, like that one is the conjugate of this one, just, just like if these were brothers. Okay. Okay, this one is the sibling of that one, and this one is the sibling of that one. They're each other's conjugate. Okay, now look what happens when I multiply this out. This time I've got the square root of s squared, which is just s, minus or plus n times square root s, minus n times square root s, uh, this one was plus n times square root, and then the last term is negative n squared. So notice what happens here. This term with the irrational number in, that vanishes because we have a plus plus that term minus that term so this is equal to zero so in the end we simply have s minus n squared okay so how do we simplify it let me just delete this part how do we simplify it we multiply with the conjugate so that's our first step multiply with the conjugate okay so again in the num and denom in the numerator and the denominator okay so and then step two would again just be simplify so it's really easy if there's a single term in the denominator we multiply usually just with the denominator but if there's a, a, a degree higher than two we'll multiply with it twice three times four times depending okay in this case we'll multiply with the conjugate in other words if this one is sorry I'm not busy with that one I'm busy with this one I'll multiply if this one is square root of s plus or minus then this one will be the square root of s minus or plus in other words when this one is a plus I'll multiply with the same thing same uh, two terms but w uh, with a different sign in between um, and that's it that's as easy but at the numerator and the denominator that's what we'll have to do negative plus n 
There we go. Same thing happens here because in the end, I'm going to square this term and square that term, which gets rid of the square roots. That's the whole idea. So this one will also just be the conjugate, even if both of those are search. Now again, if this was not a square root, it would be different, but uh, for the purposes of this course, you will not encounter that. Okay, so let's stick to, to squares for this. So let me do one example for you, and you'll see it's really very simple. Okay, so let's say I've got 2 over the square root of 2 plus the square root of 3. Okay, so what do I do? I multiply with the conjugate, which is the square root of 2, minus the square root of 3, and in the numerator also the square root of 2 minus the square root of 3. So actually what I'm doing is I'm multiplying with 1 because these can just cancel out and I have my origin original expression. Okay. So in the numerator I've got 2 square roots of 2 minus 2 square roots of 3. I distributed the 2 and in the denominator I've got the difference of 2 squares. So this becomes the square root of 2 squared minus the square root of 3 squared. Okay, so in the numerator this can't simplify, or you, it, no, you can't simplify this because the square root of 2 and the square root of 3 are different, so you can't subtract it, so we'll keep that as 2 square root 2 minus 2 square root 3, and then the denominator will change, uh, this, this will become 2 squared, uh, sorry, a square root of 2 squared is just 2, minus the square root of 3 squared is just 3, and the denominator, look, this denominator becomes 2 minus 3, it becomes negative 1. So my denominator is negative 1, negative 1, and the numerator then 2 square root 2 minus 2 square root 3, and look now what happens, we can distribute the negative 1 to each term. Okay. So this can become 2 square root 2 divided by negative 1. That gives me negative 2 square root 2. And negative 2 square root 3 gets divided by negative 1. That becomes positive 2 square root of 3. Okay, and um, I like to write my positive numbers first. You don't have to, but I like to write it like that. Okay. And there is my final answer. If you wanted to, you can take out 2 as a common factor even. So, so that looks even prettier. To me at least it looks prettier. I like this. Okay, I hope you didn't find this too difficult. As a matter of fact, I do think this is actually a very easy topic and yet quite intimidating to a lot of students. So hopefully this helped. I'll see you in the next video.